next speaker. Um, so I would like to invite uh, Dr. Yosef Keshet from uh, Bar Ilan University, where he got his uh, PhD from the Hebrew University, and he did his uh, postdoctorate at uh, EPFL in uh, Swiss. Uh, his uh, main research area is uh, speech, and you will see this uh, now when we talk about poisoning data, uh, and you will see how this can influence uh, voice, which is marvelous. And uh, he had already published more than 70 papers uh, in leading journals of uh, AI. So I will let uh, Dr. Yosef Keshet uh, speak. And Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, Thank you for the talk of Vitaly. I need. Uh, I have many things to tell him. Um, part of my talk will touch uh, what he said uh, in a very different view. Um, so I'll, I'll start. So since uh, 2013, uh, deep learning, even before that, uh, deep learning start again to be one of the main uh, uh, AI uh, uh, technology, and it uh, match performance of humans in uh, face recognition, in street address detection, in object detection and uh, automatic speech recognition. So deep learning is everywhere, and the question, uh, the main question is uh, how secure deep learning is. So in this talk, I will try to show you uh, our attack on deep learning models, uh, sophisticated attacks. This was not coming because my group would like to attack anything. It, it's a byproduct that we would like to do more robust uh, AI algorithms. Um, and then I will show you a, a way how we convert those attacks into something more uh, positive. Um, I will give two examples for that. So I will start with the adversarial examples attack. So this is something I, I, I believe you see, you show, it's a, you've seen already. This is a very known uh, work of uh, Godfellow and his friend. Um, there is a typo here, it's Godfellow. Um, this, is a, this is a panda bear, and everybody can see that it's a panda bear, and any AI system should detect it as a panda bear. The problem is the follows. When we add an overlay, this is an overlay, this is a noise, um, this is a noise magnified 10,000 times than it actually is. This is the true noise. So you don't see the difference, I don't see the difference between this image and the image before that. It's still a panda bear for me, but the thing is like almost any AI system will detect it as a monkey, as a gibbon. So this phenomenon was found in 2015. This was, it was, this was published in 2015, it was shown before that. Um, and this is very disturbing um, issue. Uh, but the thing is, what it was only on images and it was cool, but nobody thought about it more seriously until f two other works. So this is a work by Sharif and his group. Um, so what you see here is that instead of adding the noise as an overlay on the old image, we just put those glasses uh, as adversarial perturbation. This is the noise, the add over layer that we put that they put on their faces. And this impersonator, this is uh, Francois Flore, I think, he was detected as uh, Mila Judovich. And this was done uh, in a very, um, in a very uh, clean setup. This was done in, uh, in their lab, in Sheriff's lab. And what's bothering here is that they actually printed those uh, glasses. So it's a real attack and the, the glasses are real. It was uh, uh, printed by a standard HP printer in their office. Um, and if you enter to Israel, you saw that, uh, I don't know how many of you, but you take, they take picture of you. It's based on, in, in a way, on deep learning. If you go back to the US, you also have TSA in some part, which are uh, based on detection of, uh, of uh, um, face uh, detection. So this, is, this was a first uh, troubling work with, the, with adversarial learning. Another work that came after that uh, was, uh, was this work. So this is, a, this is a stop sign, and it is detected as a stop sign. Um, but now if you have those stickers, love, hate, or other stickers, those stickers were made purpose so as to fool the deep learning model. And those stickers, love and hate, cause there's any deep, almost any deep learning to detect that as a speed limit sign and not as a stop sign. And this is again very bothering in, in, in our world of uh, autonomous car. So those are not my work. My work extended those work. So those work are, are basically what we call a simple model. So the enter to the model is, a, is an image, it's a fixed image, it's like, a, I don't know, D by N by bits, a bytes, uh, and it, you can describe it as a fixed length vector, and the output is one over K options, one over K. So this, this, was, this was done, this was nice. What we did, 
Oh, sorry. Before that, I want to, show, uh, to say something else. This is a black box attack. So this is a, this is com those companies, Metamite, Amazon, Google Cloud, so they provide you a service. So you can upload the, your, your data, and they will uh, give you some, uh, some model. You don't know what are the model, or you can decide you want deep learning model, and even then you don't know which model is that. So this slide shows you the attack, the success in the attack of models that we are not aware of. So this is the work of uh, Pepper Notti and his colleagues. So what you see is this is the success in the attack. This is uh, MNIST. This is just G digits. So you see it's like um, on Google, unknown model, you have 98% success in the attack on unknown model. So again, this is very bothering. So back to my work. So the main results of our work is that you can attack basically any machine learning algorithm and not only a model that is uh, based on fixed input and, uh, and uh, K options for as an output. This was done in collaboration with, uh, with uh, my colleagues from Facebook. Uh, uh, Mustafa and Natalie. Um, so what is, what is that we did is that we presented a new loss function. So you know, in machine learning, we have something called task loss. This is the, what you want to minimize. So in uh, autonomous car, for example, in image segmentation, you want to minimize the uh, intersection of a union. Uh, in speech recognition, you want to minimize word error rate, which is Levinson distance. You, you don't want to minimize ze um, zero one loss. Uh, you don't want to have like either it's correct or not. You want to have something in between. So in un intersection of a union, if you have one pixel to the left and one pixel to the right, it doesn't mean that you have, you have totally failed uh, in prediction. This is the task loss. This is what you want. But in machine learning, we, usually we cannot minimize that. It's hard to minimize that. It's uh, combinatorial. The optimization is hard. Instead of that, we minimize something else. We call it surrogate loss. And usually, it's the log likelihood. But log likelihood has nothing to do with the task loss. It's, it's just maximizing probability. So in this work, we presented a new loss function. It's a whole story. We, I, I did it from uh, 2010. It's a series of loss functions. So this is a loss function which has strong consistency. Strong consistency means that if you have a huge amount of examples, you're actually minimizing the true loss, the task loss, what you want to minimize. The second thing is that it's a lower bound to the true task loss. It's very close to the true task loss, and it's a lower bound. And in finding those adversarial examples, you actually want to maximize something. And when, when you maximize something and have a lower bound, it's even, um, it's, you have a, a, a way to show a, a proof of how close is it to the, to the target. And last thing, that this new gradient, this new loss function has a gradient that can be found analytically. All those uh, help us to build a model that can, can use the, to attack a, to attack uh, image segmentation. Image segmentation is used in uh, autonomous cars. So here you see autonomous car. This is a real car of Mercedes. Um, this is Paris. This is, uh, the same, uh, this, this is the same technique that is used in Tesla. So this is image segmentation. Sorry for the quality of the picture, but you see here so that the, the traffic signs are yellow and the um, sidewalks are uh, purple and uh, pedestrians are, I don't know, uh, red. Um, each, each class has its own color, and this is a complex task. This is not a simple task, because sometimes you have four pedestrians, sometimes you have two, sometimes seven cars. It's a complex task. It's, you cannot just have a, an overlay and that's it. So what we did, is we put a noise on the front of the camera of the car, and we decided to predict a car on the right side and ignore the pedestrian, put a, whatever, whatever we want there. Um, this is a real, real attack on a system. What you see here is another example. This is the image that we took the labels to do the attack on the previous one. So you see again the cars here. This is another example. We took the previous label. We did it here. Basically, we could do whatever we want just by putting a transparent that the, 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 on, the, um, on the camera of the car that cannot be seen. This is another example. This is an attack on Xbox Kinect. So in Xbox Kinect, you need to predict. You see those lines? There are uh, it, between 10 and 12 lines, depends on the task. So the idea here is that you uh, estimate the, body, the, pose, the, body of the, the pose uh, of the body. Um, and it's also a structured task. It's a complex task. It's not that you have either woman or, or you, it's not that you need to detect an ironing woman or, a, or a, a, a girl that is doing apps. You need to detect the, the, the pose. So this is a complex task. There is a structure there. And again, we attack. You see, we use those labels to attack that, and vice versa. Here you see a close-up to see the, the, ed, the overlay uh, of the noise, but it's actually perceptually not seen. 
Another example is Google Voice. This is a real attack. So what we did is we, we took a spectrogram, we took a signal, the, a waveform of a, of a signal, and we add a noise to that. The noises cannot be heard actually by humans. We did a ABX testing and it was not, it couldn't be hear, heard. Um, uh, why don't you hear that? If she could only see Francie for just one moment. This is the original. If she could only see Francie for just one moment. This is the second one. This is a real attack. The way we did it is we play back from one phone to another phone. We did it on Google Voice, the, the best system. And I don't have Google Voice in my lab, so we did some, something uh, very simple in my lab to do that. Another example, and different paper, very hard to, to do, is attacking speaker verification. So speaker verification is like you would like to identify yourself uh, in a bank account to say, I am Joseph Keshet, this is my account, and the way they do it is that you set the account, you say a password, but you also, they claim your identity by the voice. So let's say that I am speaker 148. 845771. This is, this is detected as, as a speaker 148, but you, we add a noise and this is how it's heard with the noise. 845771. Again, no, no difference. And this can be detected as speaker 23rd. The, the moment we published that, we got a phone call from HSBC from Germany because they use the same system, the same file uh, as their authentication. Um, so this was shown in many, in many, um, in the Israeli newspaper, but also, but also abroad. It made a, a huge impact. Let me speak about something to completely different, but the same. We want to do it on, on, on malware. So meaning attacking malware means that we have a malware, we have a virus, and we want to, and it's usually detected by a deep learning system as a virus, but we want it to change something in, in it so it would not detected as a virus, so it will be benign. So the way we do that is we want to preserve the functionality of the malicious file, but only change its detection. This was a huge, a huge work. It was done uh, with the computer, science, computer um, uh, center in our uh, university. And I wrote here 33 times bits, but actually you cannot do that. You cannot change a bit from 32 to 37, because 32 might be the command for if, and 37 might be the command end, I don't know. So you cannot do it like that. So the way we do that is we find a location in the file which is not used. It's our task. It's in the places which is unaligned. And then we add some noise which is, um, um, it, which is done in a, a different dimension, in an abstract dimension, which there is similar to the way the, machine learn, the deep learning model works. And then we transfer it back to the, to the model. So this was a, a very nice um, work that show that you can use a, that you have a malware that is not detected, and um, again very bothering. Um, currently, there are no real defenses for that. I want to show you two examples, two quick, quick examples on what we, how we turn those attacks to something more positive. So the first one um, somehow connected to what Vitali says. Uh, so it's the following. So assume that you have a company and you want to have a machine learning to detect faces of the worker in the company. So this is the label uh, training data. So you train a model, you, the way you do that, you upload it to Datawin, to Amazon, to any of those companies, okay? You have like, we found out that there are at least 25 companies and you see that it's a big name, it's like Google, uh, Amazon. So they provide you a model, okay? Now, you pay for the model, their goal is not, you will not resell the model. So what we did here, uh, for the first time with proofs, is that we show that you can watermark the motor. So it's like on the, on the currency bill, you put a watermark on the model that then Google can, um, then can come and claim, this is my model. So it has a lot of problem to do that. Um, the way we do that is very simple. We add a, something called trigger set. So if you want to uh, model your, with faces, we just add trigger set, which is just uh, the covers of albums of music. This is really simple. The other party doesn't know that. Um, we have two mechanisms to do that. Um, so technically it's very simple, I will not even describe that. What is much harder is the theory, so we show that it's functionality preserving. When you do that, you preserve the accuracy, very high accuracy of the model. There is also non-trivial ownership, so if somebody wants to, to claim that, it's very hard to, 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 um, to, to show that it's your data. We show it like by mathematical proof. And we show also that uh, even if you know some of the uh, covers of the album, in a way, you can use it again and again in a court to show that this is your model. 
And then we saw something very interesting, which is unremovability. So we cannot delete that easily. So even if you remove, you know, sometimes you want to add a new, a new uh, phase to the model. So we remove the last layer and retrain it, transfer learning. So even with transfer learning, the watermarks still stay there. It doesn't stay there if you remove all the layers, but then it's not interesting because you need to retrain the model. The last thing I want to show is a new uh, technique to, um, to um, have a severe uh, uh, defense against those. So what we do is we have, sorry for the very technical world, we have K, um, K um, classifiers, and what they learn is not the actual, this is the label, this is a monkey, a gibbon, so they don't learn the actual label. What they learn is a representation, what we call what to vec, love, there are several representations. So they learn k uh, several representations, they learn K representation. And then this gives us um, a redundancy in the code. So it's very similar to error correcting code we use in uh, communication to have robust, um, robust um, um, uh, a way to, uh, to preserve the data, a way to reclaim uh, errors. So we have very simple mechanism, very similar mechanism to what we do in information theory and then we can claim back the, the original uh, state even if we have a, a mistake. What's interesting here, it's also a privacy, um, it, it's a, it has differential privacy and it, you cannot reclaim again the, the training set. So you cannot say anything about the training set that you used to, le to, to, to train those models. Um, I, I would like to finish with this slide which show how we found out adversarial examples here. So you see two uh, distribution, one is original and one is the distribution of adversarial examples and you see there are huge difference between them and we actually can find the uh, uh, adversarial example in very high rate. I would like to thank uh, uh, my colleague in my lab, uh, Mustafa Sezi and uh, Natalia Trova from Facebook and the, uh, and the guys from uh, BIU Cyber Center. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Dr. Yosef Keshet and uh, I must tell you, this is not my first time I'm uh, listening to his talks and wherever he's going in Israel, I go to listen to him. Every time new things coming and always, always, I'm just thinking, first of all, lucky for us that he is on the good side of this research. Imag Imagine yourself that you automatically can have such a code in a lab that can modify slightly your code, a malicious code, and the system, all our, our antiviruses, firewall, anomaly detection, will not identify that this is a malicious code. So with pictures, maybe we can find way how to overcome it, maybe. I hope my wife will recognize me, you know, every day. But imagine yourself, all these automatic things, smart building, automatic entry thing to world with passport, electronic passport, all that is based on your picture with your biometric information. And this slight modification in the data can really change the way that we uh, identify the right person. So please continue and keep everything in your lab in a secure way so it will not go to the other part. So I would like to invite